So nobody out there in YouTube land want to let me know that Love is Blind was back? That's messed up. Are you guys, are you still rolling? It's rolling? Okay. Is it okay that I do this? I mean, if your eyes are hurting, then yeah. I just kind of thought someone would say, hey, Tate, it's back. You want to make a review? But it's cool. I guess I'll figure it out. All right, welcome to Taste Take. If you're new here, I'm breaking down the new season of Love is Blind. All right, so I'm going to go through the first four episodes, give a quick recap, then I'm going to break down the new ones, five, six, and seven, and nothing further. I haven't seen anything beyond episode seven. If that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button for your boy. For my regular Taste Takers, the first four episodes were crazy. So let's see if five, six, and seven, eight, two. Get it? I say five, six, and seven, eight, eight, two. Ugh. Never mind. I right, so boom. Love is Blind, season three. Episodes one through four gave us a very familiar setup that we've come to know and love. As most of you should know, Love is Blind started out back in quarantine days where, you know, the 2020 stuck at home life where we all just sat here and ate it all up. It's because it's quarantine. There's nothing else to do except watch all the content that Netflix put out. But then season two came out and we were definitely not in quarantine, so we couldn't blame COVID anymore. I guess we just like this stuff. This time around in season three, we get 30 new singles willing to test their luck and try to find love in the pods. And just like in the prior seasons, not everyone's going to find a fiance and it seems to be especially harder if you're a black woman. By the time we get to like episode three, we pretty much have our five couples that we're going to follow for the rest of the season. I'll give some quick thoughts on them, and then I'll break down the new episodes of five, six, and seven. First up, we got Alexa and Brennan. They gotta be like the safe couple of the season. They were barely on TV in the first couple episodes. It was like, the first time we see them, they're like, hey, I'm Alexa. Hey, I'm Brennan. And the next time we see them, they were like, I love you. I don't know what to make of them, but they're there. Next, we have Colleen and Matt. And Colleen is the one who feels the need to tell everyone that she's a ballet dancer. I don't know why. She's also the one that doesn't want to have any deep conversations. She wants every conversation for the rest of her life to be like light, just a little surface. And I guess Matt is down with that. He's the VP of some aerospace engineering something. Maybe he's an astronaut. I can't be too sure, but they're there. Then we got Zanab and Cole. This is probably the least likely couple of the whole season. She just seems to be a little insecure and he doesn't seem to want to help that because he keeps reminding her how she's not his usual type. All I really know about Zanab at this point of the first four episodes is that she uses that young lingo like all the time. Like it's the blank for me like over and over for everything. Honestly, it's the consistency for me. Wait. She reminds me a lot of Natalie from season two if y'all remember her. Just like the very well put together older woman more mature, more just grown up, that's just dealing with some immature kid and no one knows why. All right, then we got Raven and SK and Raven is the Pilates instructor who acted like telling someone that she worked in the clubs on the weekend was like admitting she was a registered sex offender. SK is my man from Nigeria and you don't really know a lot about this dude in the first four episodes. I do know that he always looks sleepy. I wish I had more to say. I mean, he seems like a nice fellow, but something tells me this is just not gonna work out. Also, I would be remiss if I didn't take a second to address the fact that Raven thought it would be a good idea to fire up a jumping jack workout while Bartiz was pouring out his heart. I don't even know what he was sharing anymore. I was too distracted by the damn jumping jacks. Then he's like, wait, are you doing jumping jacks right now? And she's like, you can hear that? And he's like, yes, I can hear that. Then she just keeps doing jumping jacks. You need to work out right now. If you were on a real date with someone, would you just excuse yourself to just do some lunges? Anyway, speaking of Bartise, our final couple is Nancy and Bartise. And these two are gonna be the talk of the town 
with these latest episodes. As you remember, episode four is when all the couples meet each other. So you get to finally see all the other people you were dating in the pod. So now Bartise gets to go face to face with Raven, the woman who just jumping jacked all over your heart. But what happened? Now, I just reminded you that Raven just jumping jacked all over Bartise's heart. But that doesn't matter. As soon as he sees her in real life, he's obsessed. I mean, yes, obviously she's super hot. Got it. But she literally jumping jacked all over your whole life story. That's how I know Love Ain't Blind. Anyway, episode four ends with Bartise word vomiting just how much he's attracted to Raven and how they will be the perfect couple in the real world because they're both into fitness and Nancy just has to sit there and take it. She's got to sit there with what I call the Nancy face. And if you watch this show, she does the Nancy face a lot. It's like a nice cold blank stare where it's like, what am I doing sitting next to this idiot and why do I like him? That's the Nancy face. You'll see it a lot. Well, then I guess she's like, well, I guess it was between this dude and Andrew who was willing to fake cry on national TV. So not, not the best choices. Poor thing. Bah. Anyway, that's pretty much episodes one through four. All right. Plot time. Kind of. It's pretty much I'm just going to break down the highlights of each of the episodes. Starting with episode five. This is where you get to spend some more time with your new fiance. <sighs> Starting with Zanab and Cole. So they're hanging out on the beach and Cole asks Zanab, hey, now that you've seen all the guys, are you having any second thoughts? And she's like, hell no. No, I'm not having no second thoughts. What the hell are, are you? And he's like, Two hours later. Then he's like, no, of course not. Raven's too much for me. Alexa is not my type. And Colleen is happy with Matt. Bruh. What kind of answer is that? Moving on. Speaking of Colleen, we get her hanging out with Matt, her new fiance. And he's like, all right, all right, all right. So if someone comes up to you at a bar and hits on you, what are you going to say? And she's like, oh, wow. Well, I'll say, I'm sorry, I have a fiance. And he's like, yeah, 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 that's good. Real cringy to watch, but actually will come in handy much later on. Alexa and Brendan are out there just being boring. Then we're off to Nancy and Bartise, and she's finally like calling out Bartise for being obsessed with Raven. And also hating on Raven, which is fair. Bartise is just repeating the same talking points over and over. On paper, we're just more compatible. If we were both at a bar, I would see her and she would see me. It just makes sense, compatibility-wise. We're just, like, more compatible. Like, first of all, no, you idiot. You just think she's hot. But don't worry. Don't you worry out there. Because Raven is about to cook this dude worse than they cooked that pizza on the beach. Now we get to the main event of the episode, the pool party. Yep, you guessed it. People are flirting with people they shouldn't be flirting with, telling secrets they shouldn't be telling, and, of course, shooting shots they shouldn't be shooting. And also, if you're Bartise, getting cooked. Alexa's out there talking about how Brennan just be jamming it in for two minutes at a time. Like, girl, that's your fiance. And as terrible as it sounds, those girls don't need to hear that. Now, to the craziest part of the whole episode, where Bartise is shooting his shot at Raven. And again, like I told you, he's doing the same thing. On paper, you know me and you are more compatible. If I saw you at a bar, you saw me at a bar. We'd be more compatible together. Blah, blah, blah. Then he tells her that Nancy is just more of a friend vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same Nancy he just proposed to. No the fuck this dude didn't just friend zone his whole fiance to a girl that jumping jacked you while you was crying. Nah, that can't be what I'm seeing. Then watch this. To make it even worse, Raven's not going for any of this shit. She's like shutting it down immediately. She's like, no, I, we're actually not compatible. All we would do is talk about the gym. And we can't have a marriage off that. This clown is simping out on a thousand percent maximum velocity. He's like, yeah, yeah, you're actually right. Yeah, you're right. My God, get away from me. That was literally the cringiest thing I've seen on TV in all of 2022. And we watched Jeffrey Dahmer eat people. Then in the same vein, Cole is on the other side of the pool trying to peer pressure Colleen to saying he's cute. He says he thinks she's cute. She says, yeah, 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 you're cute. And he thinks they're in love. But she's just trying to be nice. Then after Raven is done cooking Bartise in a whole nother scene, her and SK 
are getting some alone time. I think this is where SK got his first kiss. Poor thing. Back to the main event, though. Nancy asks Bartise, so, how was it talking to Raven? Does Bartise say, yeah, I told her I thought we were compatible and she cooked me. She was crazy. And I actually look stupid as fuck in that pool. No, 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 no. Of course not. He tells Nancy, no, nah, yeah, because, you know, we're so compatible. You know, the fitness thing. You know, we just have so much in common that way. But, uh... I don't think we're like a good emotional match. She doesn't have the connection that I have with you. No shit, bro. And then he has the nerve to ask Nancy, so like, do you think her and SK is gonna work out? Boy, if you don't get- And she's like, yeah, bro, I think, I think they are. This dude got some freaking nerve. Nancy deserves a lot better. Then we're back with Zanab and Cole, where she's complaining that Cole called her a nine out of 10, which to the naked eye sounds like a high score until you realize that Cole called Colleen a 10 out of 10. You know you don't fucked up, right? Yeah. You just can't make this stuff up. Anyway, the episode ends with Matt and Colleen. And somehow, this VP of aerospace engineering, astronaut spaceman, turns into Tupac Shakur when he finds out that Colleen said that Cole was cute. Talking about, nah, I ain't gonna get played. I ain't gonna suck. I ain't gonna get played. Yo, would you get played? Nah, nah, you personally, would you, would you stand for that? Like, who is this guy? And where... Is Matt. But to his defense, like I said, they did indeed rehearse that exact scenario where she's supposed to say, sorry, I have a fiance. And she looked, he just didn't do that. So I guess Matt was like, why do we rehearse? I'm kind of kidding. I mean, Matt really just exposed that he's kind of crazy. That's pretty much episode five. All right. Episode six is where the couples are going to leave this paradise resort and we're going to see their actual residences and meet their families. We start the episode with Nick and Vanessa Lachey. Yes, for some reason, they're still hosting the show. I don't even know why they're there. They come in, they say like two stupid things, and they're gone. Anyway, we find out that Colleen and Matt have officially made up from their little fight over Cole. But Matt is being transparent and telling the whole group, like, yeah, we had a little bit of a rough patch last night. And for all you guys in YouTube land, if you have the Netflix subscription, it comes with the rewind function. I need you to rewind to the part where Matt says, they had a little rough patch. And look at Cole's face. He's invested. Anyway, then they go to Raven and SK. And for some reason, Raven tells the whole world she needs to Google how to be Nigerian. What do you mean by that? Like, can you imagine? Anyway, we then get to a scene where Cole tells Zanab his family does not approve of what he's doing. And between me and you, I think he's lying. Now, I can't prove that. But I can still say it on my channel. Over at SK's crib, Raven is having a mental breakdown because she can't get the coffee machine to work. Then we got Bartise, who's over there hanging at one of Nancy's properties. She's like big into real estate, so she owns like several properties. But he's freaking out because her ex is her business partner. So he's like, so you're telling me you work very closely with your ex? I don't know how I feel about that. Until he finds out how much money he can make off of Nancy. Then he's like, yeah, I guess, yeah, we could work out with this because, you know, I'm, I'm younger in my career. And uh, yeah, this, this could be good. Over to Alexa and Brennan, they're also talking about money and Brennan doesn't come from money. He's like, I got so-and-so student loans and Alexa doesn't even seem to know what a student loan is. So she's like, yeah, I'm gonna need that prenup respectfully. And Brennan's like, yes, yeah, so I totally understand. I, I can do that. Back to SK's crib, we get the first family meetup where SK's mom and brother come to meet Raven. And SK's brother's name is AB. Yes. So that's SKAB. Scab. Anyway, SK's mom is there making a traditional Nigerian dish that you're supposed to eat with your hands. Raven asks for a fork, of course. But SK's mom not even tripping. She's actually really nice. Which is even more sad because we find out that Raven's parents will not be attending the wedding because they don't approve. That's cold. Then we're back with Bartise and Nancy. And Bartise is about to meet her dad and her brothers. And these dudes basically take his lunch money and send him packing. Like, I don't even know what happened in there. Those, they just punked him and kicked him out. I mean, on TV, he's going to see at the end, they're going to shake hands and stuff. It seems like everything's cool, but y'all know the tension was at a high level, as well as the amount of flies around his face. But yeah, finally, Bartiz gets out of there and he gets to now meet her mom and some of her other friends. And he's probably thinking like, yes, finally, like I get to meet her mom, like take a break. These guys are crazy. But no, her mom's an even bigger thug than her brothers. Cole and Z go to see Z's stepmom 
pretty much raised her her whole life. Very nice lady, also very churchy, like Cole. They pray together, and we're pretty much out of there. Now on to the craziest part of this episode. We're back with Raven and SK, and SK is talking about how he's going to grad school for two years in California. Now keep in mind, he got a full ride for this program, at Berkeley, by the way. So that means no student loan debt. He's just telling her he's got to watch his expenses. And Raven's like, no, no, hold on. Uh, let me get a little closer. And Raven's like, uh, I'm really proud of you for your like school stuff, but um, I don't want my quality of life to suffer because of it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Girl. <laughs> what kind of relationship is that? This woman is talking about going to Whole Foods and not looking at the price tag. I don't know what to tell you, but that's not the flex you think it is. Like, Alexa is probably watching this and laughing in your face. Now, I need y'all to listen to this next part very carefully. Now, you may or may not remember about 10 seconds ago when I said that SK is going to go to school in California. Yeah, if you need to rewind, it's there, but I did say that. This girl, Raven, has the nerve to say out loud that they should still split her rent in Texas, where she wants to live alone. That don't make no sense. Yeah, so she knows his expenses are taken care of, he's cutting back for grad school, but you want him to pay your rent while you stay there and just sit in Texas. You know he's cutting back expenses, but you want him to take on a new e expense, cause, cause yeah. All right, we got to get out of here. It's just two more scenes, and then we're on to episode seven. First up, we're back with Bartis and Nancy, who are having a very serious discussion about kids. Now, Nancy is 31, so she's asking Bartis, who's like, I think, 26 or something like that, hey, like, what's up? Like, when do you want to have kids? And he's like, well, not at least till two to four years, and that's at the minimum. I'll wait even longer. And she's trying to tell him, like, bro, like, I hear you, but I I'm on a little clock here, so... He's like, yeah, 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 no, I hear, I hear that, I hear that, I hear that. And she's like, yeah, because the older you are, the more likely, you know, your kid can have birth defects. It's just like a not as safe pregnancy. And he's like, yeah, you know, I feel that. So then she's like, so how would you feel about abortion if you knew that the kid was going to have some defects? And he's like, absolutely not. What the hell? I would love that kid no matter what. What the? Get an abortion. No way, Jose. I'm raising that kid. This is, that's it. And then he goes on with this whole spiel like, you know, I get it if you like, are having sex and you have an unplanned pregnancy and you want to get an abortion because you're not ready, I get that. But you only get one, one free abortion and then that's it. Then that's, the rest of them, you just got to have that kid. And then she's like, oh, what if someone gets raped? And he's like, all right, well, that's okay. That's an exception. I could see that. And then she's like, what if someone poked a hole in the condom and they're just trying to spread their seed? And he's like, well, yeah, I guess that also is another example of a situation where I would support it. And then she's like, well, what do you think about plan B? And he's like, yeah, I, I, I support Plan B. I think that's totally different. I bought a couple Plan Bs, actually. The dude's like the Herschel Walker of Love is Blind. No, I'm just kidding. Basically, all she was trying to say is that she used to work with kids with special needs, and she saw how hard it was on the families, how taxing it was, and how it could even tear families apart. So she's like, I just think that people should be able to do what they want with their own bodies. If they want an abortion, they should be able to get one for whatever reason they want. So yeah, they had that debate already. It's a tough conversation. All I know is that if it was me and I knew my baby was coming out with birth defects, I would definitely That's all I'm saying. Anyway, the episode ends with Brennan going to meet Alexa's family. And Alexa's stepmom is officially the hottest woman on the whole show. I don't know what her dad is up to, but this dude gotta be filthy rich. Like, no, no, seriously, like how rich is her dad? I guess we'll get into it. Oh yeah, that's pretty much episode six. All right, here we go with episode seven. And this episode starts exactly where six left off. We're with Brennan and Alexa's dad. And he's 1,000% pocket checking this dude. He's like, look, bro, I'll be real with you. Can you provide this kind of lifestyle that Alexa's used to? And Brennan is pretty much like, absolutely not. But <laughs> I'm going to work really hard so that I can provide that. It might not be this year or it might not be next year. But I'm be working, which is a good answer. That's all you can say. Like, what? It's a lot of stuff happening in that house for Brennan to be like, yes, I can do that right away. This dude said he grew up without heat and water, something like that. So, 
Overall, it was a pretty good conversation with her dad. He seems like a cool dude. And Brennan is willing to convert to Judaism. And I don't know if I said that right. Judaism? Judaism? Who? Ju He's willing to convert. Anyway, Colleen goes to meet Matt's family. It's a pretty standard visit, but his mom is very nice. Then Zanab goes to Cole's house, and it's exactly how you would expect. This dude lives like he's 19 years old. It's freaking disgusting. And I'm pretty sure his TV is bigger than his bed. The baby capsule thing was pretty cool, though. I wish I had something like that. Then we get Nancy meeting Bartice's family. His mom, his dad, and his sister. And for some reason, Bartice decides to bring up the abortion debate. Which is fine to have like serious discussions with your future family, but like it's the first meeting. Then his sister like bursts out in tears like she just finished getting one. Hey, you ain't going too goddamn far now. Okay, okay. Sheesh. Anywho, then we get the craziest moment of this episode. Well, I think it's the craziest. This is when SK meets Raven's friends. Remember, her family is not in agreement of this wedding. So it's like two of her homegirls who apparently she grew up with. For some reason, Raven is being weird about the fact that SK is Nigerian, which I get it. Cultural differences are a big thing when you're dating someone. It is a fair thing to be concerned about, but like you knew he was Nigerian since the pod and nothing changed when you got out. Like you didn't go to his house and he forced you to dress in some traditional Nigerian fashion. His mom was cool with you. His brother was cool with you. They accepted you. They cooked for you. You ate it with your stupid little fork. Like this all seems a little brand new. Like you just looking for trouble. But yeah, so the two friends are meeting SK and they're like, wow, you're moving to California for grad school? That's crazy, like how do you think that's gonna work? Like the friends were honestly just kind of mean to him. They're acting like he's moving to Ukraine. Like, oh, you're robbing my friend of her fairy tale. Huh? And I can't prove this, but I bet that girl's single. Damn, like I have no idea how a Pilates instructor slash bottle girl can make it in California. Whatever will she do? Anyway. Then we get Alexa meeting Brennan's family, which is like 180 degree difference from when he met her family. Like this dude had to walk by a literal Ferrari to get into her house and she had to walk by literal chickens. It's just different. So that's pretty much all the family meetups. Then the group all gets together for a big little hangout as the episode comes to a close. The party doesn't end up being as spicy as I would have liked it to be. The biggest development is Zainab telling all the girls that Cole is attracted to Colleen, like it's some big surprise. That just leads us to one horrifying game of telephone. I swear these people just act like this show's not being recorded, which is good for the viewers, but like, come on, man. Like, they're gonna see you say these things. Anyway, the little twist here is that the rest of the original cast pulls up at the party. Yeah, like all the people that didn't find matches, now they're all here at the party, including Andrew from Crygate. And of course, he gets his one-on-one -on -one time with Nancy. But she stays strong though, like unlike Bartiz, she tells Andrew, like, no, 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 I don't regret saying no to you. Like, it was not working. And Andrew was actually being kind of cool. Like, the cry thing was crazy, but in this moment, he was being kind of normal, which is like, respectable. And she does complain to him about how Bartiz has been acting a little weird. She's not getting hugs. She's not getting forehead kisses. What's going on? I mean, like, as if Andrew has the answers. He, he's trying to get that old thing back, so he's like, really? You're not getting hugs? I hug. Naturally, Bartiz pulls up to the conversation, super awkward, and of course, wants to smooch Nancy all of a sudden. Get out of here, now you wanna smooch? Back with Zanab and Cole, she still feels uneasy about him and Colleen. And he's, like, literally just, like, pouring his heart out and explaining his, I guess, point of view. And she calls it a display. I kind of thought he was being nice. But the episode ends with the matchup we've been waiting for. The one-on-one -on -one between Matt and Cole. But they don't even fight. Like this dude, Cole was being surprisingly honest. Like he told Matt exactly how it went down. Like, yeah, man, I pulled up on your girl. I told her she was cute. She like half-assed told me I was cute, but I know she just felt pressure to just tell me that in the moment. But like, I know you guys have something special. Go after her. You guys are a great match. Which is like, damn, like for a dude living in like a dorm room, it was a very mature moment. I was very impressed with Cole. He literally told this dude, Matt, exactly how it went down. He's the first person to act like this show has been recorded. Like, look, I know this show is being recorded, so let me just tell this dude the truth. Good job, Cole. But then, later on that night, in the middle of Bartice fighting with Nancy, telling her how not hot he thinks she is, 
Matt calls him out the blue and he's like, hey bro, you seen Colleen? I heard she went to the club. And Bartice is like, what the hell? No, nah, I haven't seen her. Stay right there, bro. I'm coming to get you. So yeah, I don't know where Colleen is. Hopefully, she's in the club with Cole. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They'll be a little spicy. That's pretty much episode seven. So yeah, that's where we're at. I can't believe we have a third season of this show where I'm equally invested as the other seasons. Like, I guess keep making these things. We got three more episodes that's coming out next Wednesday. So I'm going to have a video for that. That's episodes eight, nine, and 10. Again, I did not see those episodes. So all my little opinions and thoughts are all just, I just seen what you guys seen. And then I'll have a video for that one next week. Couple overall thoughts. I don't understand why Nancy likes Bartiz so much. That's something that's troubling. A couple questions for you guys. Why does Nancy like Bartiz? Second question, perhaps a bonus. How would you handle it if your partner was going to grad school across the country for two years, just two months after you guys got married? How would you handle it? Question three, do you check the prices at Whole Foods? All right, y'all, I'm out of here. If you like videos like this and want to see next week's coverage, just hit that like and that subscribe button in the comments. Answer those questions, please. Thanks for the time, y'all. Peace.